Dear Ambassador Fanyon, dear Professor Darpinyan, dear all, thank you for your coming. We are starting our first China-Russia conference, and for welcoming speech, I want to ask Professor Darpinyan, Rector of Russian Armenian University, to deliver welcoming speech. Professor Darpinyan is one of the best scholars who knows in practice and theoretically which kind of political and economic developments are happening in the Russian space. Thus, his contribution to this conference is very important. Therefore, dear Professor Tarpinian, I am very thankful for your support, and I am very thankful that we coordinate this, uh, this uh, important conference in Russian Armenian University. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, dear Dr. Shaikhan, uh, Your Excellency, Ambassador Yang Fan, uh, dear colleagues, guests, and participants of the conference, it's my pleasure and honor to say welcome to everybody both, uh, in person here in our great hall of Russian Armenian University and also to those who joined us by internet in an online format. It's our pleasure to say a special thanks to Dr. Sarkan for arranging this conference. This is the third time where, when the China-Eurasia conference is taking place due to his uh, tremendous efforts and I have to say uh, many words of thanks to Maher Saikan for, for his great contribution in China-Eurasia uh, cooperation in research and uh, activities devoted to unify the world, to unify China-Eurasia cooperation. Uh, I would say a couple of words from, of course, from Armenian perspectives. How do we see the cooperation? How do we participate in that? How do, see, how, uh, do we see our own role in bringing the world together? I think uh, Armenians as ancient nation as great ancient civilization. We're always playing a role of unifying and combining the world, uh, in bridging Europe which with Asia. We equally belong to Europe and to Asia, to West and the East. And we were, I think, great players, historically great players in bringing Western values to the East and vice versa from East to the West. And I think that today's opportunities and our challenge as Armenian nation and the state is to regain, is to restart this role of bringing civilizations together in bridging them, in combining interests rather than contradicting them. Unfortunately, what we see in today's world is uh, just the opposite picture. We see the picture when uh, there are different uh, initiatives which were not for uh, combining interests or bringing them together. I think China, Eurasia is a great opportunity of bringing the world together. And it's not just coincidental that we, as Armenian state, uh, took a decision to participate in Eurasian Economic Union. I think Armenia, as the country, again, uh, as the country which represents both Europe and Asia, we can be a good players in this, uh, in this respect. And, uh, uh, of course, our circumstances uh, being blocked by Turkey for all these 30 years of our independence uh, 
broke, have, have broken our efforts of being the bridge, of regaining, of restarting this role of being the bridge between Europe and Asia. But I think uh, that the development, uh, the world development, the development of China, development of Russia, and uh, their own role in the new world order will bring Armenians a new chance of regaining and restarting uh, this function of being the bridge. And uh, we uh, in uh, Armenian Russian University here in Yerevan are very happy that we are the unique institution which implemented Chinese studies uh, and offered this opportunity to Armenian students and fellows to better understand China, to better understand the ways of cooperation, to better understand our own role in this cooperation. How do we see our own role, our own contribution to the a great opportunity which again comes from China Eurasia cooperation. Uh, I noticed the statement which was made by ambassadors uh, Antonov and Kang, ambassadors of Russia and China uh, in the United States just recently. They made a statement on unifying the interests, on combining them on bringing the world together rather than dividing the world. Uh, Armenia is a state which uh, is invited to this uh, democracy, uh, the summit of democracies. I think we have to use also this opportunity to say that we are not for dividing the world. We are for combining interests. We are for unifying interests. We are for bridging, bridging uh, the civilizations together. And uh, the, 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 the people, the, the world, the different civilizations, they decide their own how to proceed, how to find their own way to success and happiness. And nobody should break these efforts of, own, of having the own way of success to, to the success and happiness. And I think we, as the uh, ancient nation, as the civilization which was called for bridging the world uh, by our geographic positions, by our uh, cooperating skills, by our trading opportunities, by being trusted uh, partners in international trade, we will refine our own great role in combining civilizations. I wish everybody, uh, partic in, uh, participants, uh, guests, uh, our honorable speakers, which will join us via online, and the opportunity of being together here in Yerevan, in our university, is a great opportunity to share uh, our views, to share our vision, to find a common vision, vision to the regional and the world progress and success. I wish you all success and happiness. And again, thanks a lot to Mary Sarkian, to Dr. Sarkian, for initiating this conference. We, as the core organizers, are very happy to host you all here via internet or in person. Thank you very much and wish you all success. Dear Professor Dalpinian, thank you for your welcoming speech. It was very interesting. And thank you once again for hosting and co-organizing this event in Russian Armenian University. I want to thank Ambassador Fan for his great support for organizing third year Russian research on modern China and the Russia International Conference. By the way, it is already the second conference which we are organizing with his support. I want to thank you once again for closely cooperating with China and Russia Council for political and strategic research. And please, the floor is yours. Honorable Dr. 
Tante Lavinia and Dr. Sakia and Mrs. Chenhui together with other friends through the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it is a great pleasure for me to attend this conference on modern, the Eurasian Research and Modern China and Eurasian Conference, thanks to China Eurasian Council for Political and Strategic Research and Russian, Univers Russian Armenian, Armenian University for organizing this event. And our embassy staff are joining me to send congratulations and the best wishes to Dr. Sarkian and uh, your council for the five years anniversary. And uh, we wish all the best and all the success for today's conference. On the main topic of this, today's conference, I would like to share with you some ideas about China's foreign diplomacy and China's development experiences. 72 years ago, on October 1st, 1949, Chairman Mao Zedong solemnly announced the funding of the central government of the People's Republic of China, which started a new era of the new China's diplomacy. Since then, in the period of socialist re uh, revolution and construction, the Com Communist Party of China is always following an independent foreign policy of peace, advocating and adhering to the five principles of peaceful coexistence, firmly subjugating national independence, sovereignty and dignity, supporting and assisting national liberation of oppressed nations, construction of newly independent countries, and fighting against imperialism, hegemonism, colonialism, and racism, fighting for justice for the people all over the world. The strategy of, for dividing the three worlds was put in forward, and China made a solemn commitment that China would never seek hegemony. So in October 1971, China restored all the legitimate rights in the United Nations brought a new page for Chinese diplomacy to the international arena. Coming to the 21st century, the world came into a period of great development, change and adjustment. But the theme of peace and development has not yet changed. Multipolarization, economic globalization, cultural diversity and social informatization are further developing. Changes in the global governance and the international order has accelerated. Different countries are increasingly interconnected and interdependent. International powers become more and more balanced. The trend of peaceful development is still irreversible. Meanwhile, the world instability and uncertainty became more prominent. Economic globalization has encountered countercurrent difficulties. The world peace and development is facing the threat of unilateralism, protectionism, and hegemonism. The international community is confronted not only by regional disputes but also global issues and, uh, such as terrorism, climate change, cyber security, and biosecurity. It is an era of endless challenges and increasing risks to humans. The world is now experiencing global pandemic and major change and seen in the century. China adheres to the foreign policy of safeguarding world peace and promoting common development, adjusts relations with big countries, developing friend relations with neighboring countries, deepens cooperation with developing countries, actively participates in international and regional affairs, and establishes a new pattern of all around and multilateral foreign relations. China actively promotes world multipolarization and democratization of international relations, promotes economic globalization in a direction to common prosperity, clearly stand against emotionalism and power politics, firmly safeguards the interest of the majority of the developing countries, promotes the establishment of a fair and reasonable new international political and economic order and promote lasting peace and common prosperity in the world. A few weeks ago, the sixth plenary session of the 19th Communist Party of China's Central Committee was held successfully in an important historic moment of the 100 years anniversary of the funding of the party. The conference summarized systematically and comprehensively the party's major achievements 
and the historical experience of the past century, there are ten aspects such as upholding the party's leadership, putting the people first, advancing the theoretical innovation, following Chinese paths, and maintaining a global vision, etc. They are the secrets of Chinese continuous successes. The re resolution adopted by the conference also declared that the Chinese people are striving to build a modern socialist, socialist country in the all around way and achieve the second centennial goal. Standing on a new development stage, the Communist Party of China will implement the new development concept, build a new development pattern, promote high quality development, comprehensively deepen reform and opening up, and lead China's diplomacy with new contribution to the construction of a new type of international relations. President Xi Jinping attaches great importance to Chinese diplomacy and brought new ideas and new initiatives with Chinese characteristics that formed Xi Jinping's thought on diplomacy. In the year 2018, the guiding position of Xi Jinping's thought on diplomacy was for confirmed and piled the way forward for China's diplomacy in a new era. Now I want to brief you a little bit about the Xi Jinping's thought on diplomacy. First, is the Communist Party of China is the leading hope of the, for the cause of socialism with Chinese char characteristics in all fields strengthening the centralized and unified, unified leadership of the Communist Party of China on foreign affairs is the fundamental guarantee of China's diplomacy in the new era. Second, promotes the construction of a community with a shared future for mankind and safeguarding world peace, promoting joint development in a chief goal, is the chief goal of China's foreign policy. The Communist Party of China seeks not only the happiness for Chinese people and the national rejuvenation, but also progress for mankind and harmony for the, for the world. General Secretary Xi Jinping put forward the idea of building a community with a shared future for mankind. That is China's plan to solve the world's question of the times. President Xi also proposed building an open, an inclusive, clean and beautiful world that enjoys lasting peace, universal security and common prosperity and promoting the building of a new international relations of mutual respect, fairness, justice and win-win cooperation. Thirdly, promoting the Belt and Road construction. President Xi proposed the building of the Silk Road Economic Belt and the 21st century maritime Silk Road in the year 2013, known as the Belt and Road Initiative. The Belt and Road Initiative is under the principle of ex extensive consultations, joint contributions and shared benefits. Consultation means communication, brainstorming and fully respecting the difference in different levels, economic structure, level, uh, legal system, business environment, and cultural traditions in different countries. And joint construction means joint participation and in-depth connection with relevant national and regional development strategies. Shared benefits means mutual benefits and win-win results. All the participating parties could maximize their interest through cooperation. Fourthly, Formally safeguarding national sovereignty, security and development interest is the sacred mission of Chinese diplomacy. Adhering to the peaceful development is the basis, basic principle in the new era. Actively developing global partnership is an essential focus. Participating in the form, reform and construction of the global governance is, the, is our responsibility. China and Armenia are both ancient civilized countries. The friendship between China and Armenia has a long history, could be traced back to the time of ancient Silk Road time, more than 2,000 years ago. Since the establishment of the diplomatic relations in, in the year of 1992, the friendly relations between China and Armenia has always developed healthily and stably on the basis of mutual respect, and mutual benefit. 
Armenia was among the first to respond and support the One Belt, One Road initiative, and it is also important to strengthen the strategic connections with One Belt, One Road initiatives and also Eurasian countries. And Armenia could play an important role among it. In many years, China has been Armenia's second largest trading partner if we count by countries. According to China's statistics, the bilateral trade volume of China and Armenia in the, last, in the past 10 years of the year 2020-21 was nearly US dollar, in US dollars 1.2 billion, with an increase of 57%. And that figure is bigger than the one of the whole year of 2020, with the country with the conti uh, continuous impact of the global, global the pandemic, this achievement is not an easy one and showed us fully the strong tenacity and broad prospects of the bilateral cooperation. As a good friend and partner, China firmly supports the development path chosen by the Amer Armenian people and is willing to share with useful experience in governance and, e and economic development one of the important experiences of China's success is to find and persist in a developed path suitable for its national feature, uh, with its national features. When we talk about the issue of democracy, national conditions verify different greatly, and the ways to achieve democracy are completely different to each other. Democracy is the common value of humanity and the right of all peoples not to the single pattern, pattern of one or a few countries. If one country determines whether another one, another country is democratic or not, it is actually anti-democracy. In September this year, in the 76th General Assembly of the United Nations, President Xi Jinping proposed the Global Development Initiative advocating the spirit of openness and inclusiveness, poverty reduction, food security, pandemic prevention, and vaccines financing for development, climate change, and green development, industrialization, digital economy, and interconnection. Among those aspects, Armenia may find some needs for its development and China welcome Armenia's joint participation in this GDI. Next year, China and Armenia will celebrate its 30th anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic relations, which will be a milestone in the development of China-Armenia bilateral relations. We have all the reasons to be sure that, with the joint efforts of us, China-Armenia friendly cooperation will mount high to a new development stage to a new level so as to better benefit the two countries and our two peoples. I thank you all for listening. Thank you. Dear Ambassador, thank you very much for your very important speech. Thank you very much for your lecture. It was very interesting to understand China's foreign policy from you. Dear Professor Darkinian, dear Ambassador Fan Yong, Colleagues, it is my pleasure to invite General Secretary of the Good Neighborliness, Friendship and Cooperation Commission of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Her Excellency Ambassador Zheng Wei. She is a great and very kind individual who is doing very important work for organizing many useful events for United Nations who are involved in Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the entire Eurasian continent. Last year, China and Russia Council for Political and Strategic Research and Good Neighborliness, Friendship and Cooperation Commission of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization signed a Memorandum of Understanding, which provides us opportunity to develop relations and cooperation. Dear General Secretary, the floor is yours. Thank you that you have joined us. <laughs> Уважаемый директор Мугер Саакян, дорогие гости, друзья, добрый день. Прежде всего, хотел бы поблагодарить Совет политических и стратегических исследований Китая и Евразии за приглашение и тщательную работу, 
по организации нынешней конференции. В, этой, в этом году отмечается пятилетие основания Совета. Сердечно поздравляю с успешной работой. Мы гордимся тем, что у нас есть такой партнер, как вы. С момента своего основания под руководством директора Мухера Сакия, Совет всегда принимает, применяет тщательный, объективный и справедливый подход, никогда не забывал об ответственности и прагматичности в обществе, стремится к поискам истины и инновационному развитию, прилагает большие усилия к укреплению обменов между интернациональными аналитическими центрами, а также к содействию региональному развитию. В следующем году исполнится 30-летие с момента установления дипломатических отношений между Китаем и Арменией. На первом новом старте мы готовы вместе с вами использовать преимущества народной дипломатии и расширить каналы обменов между народами и тем самым внести новый, еще больший вклад в развитие отношений между нашими странами. Новый год наступает. Обобщать нынешний год. Путь социализма с китайской спецификой вызвал особое внимание у специалистов разных стран. Под руководством КПК и с участием активной работы в восьми других партий, в том числе и партия Коминтан, Китай из бедной и отсталой страны превратился в вторую экономику мира, что нелегко объясняется многими западными политическими и экономическими теориями. Сегодня имею честь познакомить э, уважаемых экспертов и ученых с одним документом. В ноябре этого года было принято шестом, шестым пленумом ЦК КПК 19 созыва третье решение в истории КПК, в котором обобщаются основные достижения, исторический опыт, столетние борьбы КПК, а также оригинальные идеи, преобразующие практики, прорывы и знаковые достижения со времени 18-го съезда КПК, указанные ответы на вопросы, в чем кроется наш успех в прошлом и что может гарантировать наш успех в будущем, среди которых наиболее значительным опытом является одно. Руководящее ядро крайне важно для политической партии и для всей страны. Определение роли Сидимина в качестве итерации как КПК и КПК в целом – это зов эпохи, исторический выбор и общее чаяние народа. Если такая страна, как Китай, с населением более 1 миллиарда и 400 миллионов человек, хочется развиваться и выполнять свои международные обязательства, она должна иметь сильное руководящее ядро, чтобы объединить все силы и решать основные вопросы, которые влияют на будущее страны и судьбу человечества. Китайский путь создан китайским народом в упорной борьбе. Успех Китая убедительно доказывает, что в мире не может быть только одного единственно правильного пути развития или единственной правильной политической системы. И у народов всех стран есть право независимо выбирать для себя путь развития. За 30 лет с момента обретения независимости страны Евроазиатского региона непрерывно ищут подходящий для себя путь развития и добились значительных достижений. Сотрудничество между Китаем и странами Евразийского региона служит примером взаимного уважения к пути развития друг друга. Мы придаем друг другу приоритетное значение во внешней политике и являемся стратегическими партнерами друг для друга. Независимо от внешних обстоятельств, мы всегда ценим нашу традиционную дружбу. Мы оказываем друг другу твердую поддержку в вопросах 
затрагивающих ключевые интересы друг друга, а также расширили содержательное, стратегически важное и взаимовыгодное сотрудничество во всех областях. Мы совместно отстаиваем подлинный мультилатерализм и вместе вносим новый и больше весомый вклад в благородное дело мира и развитие человечества. У нас общее понимание и стремление к демократии и свободе. Демократия – не украшение и не инструмент для манипуляции или раскола. Она должна быть использована для решения проблем во благо народа. Демократия – это не патент какой-либо одной страны, а право народа всех стран. Ситуация в Афганистане в очередной раз показывает и доказывает, что внешнее военное вмешательство и так называемое демократическое преобразование приносят ничто иное, кроме катастрофы. Следует беречь и защищать такие общечеловеческие ценности, как мир, развитие, справедливость, демократия и свобода, отказаться от скалочивания узких кругов и игры с нулевой суммой. В связи с этим представитель КНР Си Тинхин выступает за поддерживание высококачественного развития проекта одного пояса, одного пути, направленное на достижение высоких стандартов устойчивости и народного благополучия что способствует совместному развитию путем укрепления взаимосвязанности. Позвольте мне и привести в пример несколько успешных практик многостороннего сотрудничества. За 8 лет с момента запуска инициативы «Один пояс, один путь» Китай с более чем 140 странами и более чем 30 международными организациями подписали более 200 документов о сотрудничестве по совместному строительству одного пояса, одного пути, среди которых и проект строительства автомагистрали Север-Юг в Армении, в котором принимает участие компания Power China. Данный транспортный коридор соединяет важные транспортные узлы и играет активную роль для улучшения инфраструктуры и условий коммуникации Армении. С начала нынешнего года Китай выдвинул инициативу по партнерству в области зеленого развития и инициативу развития отношений сотрудничества и партнерства в области вакцин с более чем 30 странами. При этом Китай поставил более 1 миллиарда и 400 миллионов доз вакцин против COVID-19 странам и партнерам по инициативе. За первые 9 месяцев всего года товарооборот между Китаем и странами ШОС достиг 395 миллиардов долларов США с приростом в 40% против аналогичного периода прошлого года. Практика вновь показала, что какая бы ни стояла преграда, какая бы ни была глубокая пропасть, строительство мостов и дорог всегда успешно и полезно. В сегодняшнем мире переплываются и накладываются друг на друга сложные факторы, как не виданные за столетия перемены и пандемии COVID-19. А вся международная архитектура претерпевает глубокие и сложные трансформации. Наш комитет готов развивать сотрудничество со всеми сторонами, провести углубленные дискуссии и укрепить консенсус, а также 
постараться стать мостом между народами, двигателями гуманитарных обменов и строителем прагматичного сотрудничества, чтобы внести вклад в распространение общечеловеческих ценностей и построение сообщества единой судьбы человечества. Желаю всем участникам крепкого здоровья и полного успеха конференции. С наступающим Новым годом! Спасибо за внимание! Dear General Secretary, thank you very much for your very interesting speech. Dear all, this year we uh, celebrate the uh, anniversary of the foundation of China and Russia Council for political and strategic research. It stood one of the important platforms where the Russian nations cooperate with each other in the sphere of scholarship and academic diplomacy. During these five years, we have organized with our partners many conferences, seminars, discussions and summer schools. We are proud that today we have organized already the Russian Army University, the third year Russian research on modern China and the Russia conference, which is already well known academic event in the Russian continent. You can just check our program and find out quality and vast geography of this conference. During these five years, with our partners, we have published books, reports, working papers. The last one of, uh, uh, is this book, uh, which is called China and Russia, uh, Rethinking Cooperation and Contradiction in the Era of Changing World Order, published by one of the best and leading publishing houses of the world, Rutledge of Tenor and Francis, which I want to give as a present to Professor Darpinian and Ambassador Fang Yong. Today I want to thank, uh, thank, uh, thank several friends who have been with us during these five years. At first I want to thank Mr. Jo Hon Yu for his great support and friendship. During these years he helped to create contacts and cooperation with, uh, with, uh, between China and Russia Council for Political and Strategic Relations and Chinese Academic Institution. He is my good friend and I know that he did a lot uh, during these years for improving Armenian-Chinese relations as well. Now he is finishing his work uh, in Armenia and going back to China. I wish him good luck and I hope we will keep contact and cooperation. I also want to thank Dr. Robert Hazarian for cooperation and invite him to succeed. We have organized together two international conferences, one summer school for developing cooperation between China and Russia Council and the uh, uh, Institute of Oriental Studies of National Academy of Sciences. This year, several months ago, we have also signed a memorandum of understanding. Dear Dr. Hazarian, please. Excellency, Mr. Yong Fan, uh, dear Rector of the Russian Armenian University, Professor Darpinian, uh, dear participants, uh, founding head of the China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research, Dr. Meir Sarkian, members of the Academic Council, dear colleagues, first of all, let me thank you for the certificate. It is a great honor for me to receive it. China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research and the Institute of Oriental Studies have been cooperating with each other for already five years. In uh, 2018, together with Dr. Maher Saakyan, we jointly organized a special course Rethinking Chinese Foreign Policy and the International Conference Eurasian Research on Modern China and Eurasia. 
Then on May 10, 20, uh, 2021, a memorandum of understanding was signed between China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research and the Institute of Oriental Studies. According to the memorandum of understanding, the parties agreed to strengthen, strengthen cooperation with each other to contribute to the development of relations between institutions to continue and boost cooperation in academic, informational, educational and other fields. Chinese studies are one of the most important scientific directions at our institute and our work in that direction and our work in that direction has been very successful. At the same time, the China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research, in particular its uh, director, Merk Sahagyan, has been making a significant <coughs> contribution to the development and strengthening of this field. In this regard, it is very important that such institutions in Armenia join forces in the hope of working together and achieving significant scientific achievements. Besides our, uh, besides our two scientific institutions have good experience of cooperation. And the combination of our efforts and our joint work can serve the further development of this field and will create prospects for new cooperation. Thank you very much. The next certificate of gratitude is going to Dr. Arthur Israelian, who is good friend of China and Russia Council for Political and Strategic Research. We jointly organized second Eurasian Research on Modern China and the Eurasia Conference at the Yale State University two years ago. Dear Dr. Israelian. Thank you, Dr. Meir Sarkian, Your Excellency, Ambassador Fang Yong, Director of Russian Armenian University, Armen Darpinian, dear colleagues, dear students. It is a huge honor uh, to welcome you on this very beautiful and symbolic day in Russian Armenian University. We are participating in the opening ceremony, third conference on modern China and Eurasia. I'm so happy to see you uh, together here. I would like to convey my greetings to all participants and wish good luck and effective working process during the conference. I hope that the international conference will be a success. As we know, China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research is one of the Eurasian's international policy institutions focused on China and Eurasia defense and security, regional study and transnational challenges in the area of China's pivot forward Eurasia, mainland and Russia's and the US pivots forward Asia. During a short cooperation with the foundation, we have organized the China Eurasia Second International Conference in Yerevan State University. The conference focused on modern China Eurasia studies in a multidisciplinary social science perspective. The conference was decided to the 70th anniversary of China and 100th anniversary of Yerevan State University. I'd like to thank my colleague good friend Meir Saakyan for his support and cooperation. Dear Meir, I am extremely honored uh, to get this certificate from you. Dear colleagues, Armenia is very interested in One Belt and One Road project, which is one of the biggest Chinese projects. I think research in the project is one of most important cooperation results. China initiated the project One Belt and One World, which has a large geographic coverage and Armenia is among its active partners. 
It is very important for us to develop effective and dynamic integration. Young Armenians started to show great interest to Chinese culture, the Chinese language, and China in general. So we are willing to assist in popularization of Chinese studies in Armenia. The world is becoming more and more global today. Uh, it is both glo global and local today. And it is in this context the distance between Ar Armenia and China is only in kilometers. While in terms of ideas and goals, the two countries are very close. In this case, the role and work of China Eurasia Political and Strategic Research Council is very important. I am sure the establishment and development of mutual relations between the universities, scientific centers and the councils will be effective in the future. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, now I am inviting to several special guests, speakers, diplomats, scholars and officials who have got invitation from me or from Professor Darpinia uh, for a family photo of the conference.